So the gold standard when we start looking at making the diagnosis is to truly culture and isolate the virus. Okay? So nasal swabs, the nasal pharyngeal swab, or a buffy coat, so that's a portion of the blood that we collect in a purple top tube. The buffy coat is the white cells, and this virus lives inside of the white cells, so that's why the buffy coat is important for that. Okay? So the PCR test, the polymerase chain reaction, that's our, that's our test of choice. All right? Now there's a couple different tests that we do, and Rocky's probably sitting back there going, well, that's not quite right, but he'll, he'll correct me here in a minute if it doesn't come out the way it's supposed to. We have conventional sort of PCR that just tells you that there are viral particles that are present. Quantitative, when we can actually, as it implies, tell you the level of viruses that are present. Okay. So how do we proceed as far as making the diagnostics? Blood and nasal swab, again, for PCR, looking for viral particles. That's typically where we're going to start, okay? And we're going to do blood and nasal swabs for viral isolation to actually culture this virus when we have signs and then we come back with a PCR that's positive or very suggestive that we have the virus. So then we try to isolate the, the virus. Paired serum samples is another way of looking at this, but that takes time and it's not specific. So you have, you collect a, a, a blood sample when they first begin showing clinical signs, and then seven to 21 days later you collect it again. You're just looking for a rise in their antibodies that tell them that they have been infected, okay? This next point I think is really important because a lot of people are trying to figure out how can I assure myself that my horse isn't inf infected or other horses in the barn are or aren't infected. So if there aren't clinical signs, just going through and swabbing noses and submitting for PCR as a screening method is not recommended. It's not useful, okay? So you have to have more indications, i.e. having a fever. <clears throat> so interpreting what do these results mean when we get these back. So if we have positive PCR on blood, means that they're are viral particles there and an active infection. If it's negative, it just says that it's negative as far as we're not identifying detectable viremia, so there's not detectable viral particles there. Okay. If we have a positive nasal swab, very similarly, it tells you that you have, you're shedding infectious virus if you're getting a positive PCR on nasal swab. Okay. If you have a negative swab, then it's at least that we're below that detectable virus shedding level, or it's negative, okay? So making the diagnosis, history and clinical signs are going to be very important as far as a part of it, okay? Again, we're going to do that nasal swab, and the nasal swab is probably the better one versus the nasal pharyngeal swab, doing just the nasal swab, and it's pretty easy to be done, okay? Again, submitting blood for the PCR, and we usually collect a red top tube just to have it. We may not follow up, but we at least have that initially. Okay? And again, PCR is of little value when you're screening healthy horses, okay? When you don't have any evidence of disease. Mm -hmm.